Hey everyone, how are you? So happy to be back with you today. Today is Friday, the 18th of January, 2019. And um, I wanted to bring you your wisdom shot for today through this weekend, okay? And don't forget that the lunar eclipse in Leo, the, um, what's it called? The uh, blood wolf moon is happening on the 20th and 21st. Um, so things might be changing for a lot of us. I've already shuffled and drawn some cards, um, so I want to get right into the energies that we're going to be seeing from today through the weekend. This is not necessarily about the eclipse, but if you're resonating with my readings, this may be for you. Okay, so we have the Nine of Pentacles with the Justice card and the Wheel of Fortune. And so today I'm getting a very strong message about um, the, uh, the energy sort of bringing in the results of all the work that you've been doing. I feel that we did actually talk about this in my reading for the eclipse. So this does sort of follow. But I feel like um, there's a major change that's coming in this weekend, um, through today through the weekend. Um, to balance the scales in some way. So it's either, um, I, and I do feel that this is like basically something that you've put time in working on, releasing around, doing some kind of personal inner or outer work. Um, and I feel like, again, that it's just sort of like it's getting launched. You know, when I see this bird there, I feel like this, this energetic period is being launched. And it is... Um, with the Justice and the Wheel of Fortune card coming up here, I feel like it was something that was sort of inevitable and that, um, you know, it was one of those things that was chosen before you walked into this lifetime. So this is a time for everybody, even if your life paths might be different, where um, you're going to be resolving some kind of old conflicts or old um, issues that might have been outstanding in your personal growth and your spiritual growth. Um, that you had come to a certain point, but you could not progress further until these things were resolved and kind of taken care of. And so the energies through this weekend are going to be bringing you to that, that place um, off of this plateau and, and continuing on your upward journey into ascension or um, however that resonates for you. And with the Wheel of Fortune coming up here again, right next to Justice, there's just this very strong sense of this being a playing out of um, divine timing and divine purpose and choices that were made um, karmically before entering this lifetime. Now, if that does not, if that particular story does not resonate with you, because I personally believe that all possibilities are possible at any given time, um, then this is really just a time um, of stepping more greatly into your power um, and into what whatever it is that you're meant for. You know, if you if you don't resonate with the term karma, I get in an argument with my parents about this all the time because they just they're just like, no, karma, no, that is just not a word we do. So I have to talk about this in terms of like Judeo Christianity type stuff, and and this is really like fulfilling um, fulfilling your mission on this earth. And the big, you know, this is like one of those big hubs of transition that comes up in your lifetime. So this is going to be, I feel, very big for a lot of people, most people. Um, I do also feel here, and I will talk about this more that, and I, I have talked about this um, in some of my past readings, but it has come up that this is a time of awakening for a lot of people who have not yet gone through that, um, or maybe have gone through you know, smaller cycles of it, but this is a much larger cycle. So again, we're getting, you know, with the Justice card and the Wheel of Fortune next to the Nine of Pentacles, I feel like a lot of people have um, come to that place in their existence where they need to be then um, really um, fast forwarded into this kind of um, um, spiritual awakening, okay, to move forward and to begin to step into their mission. And I have been confronted with a number of people, including my best friend from high school, who I realized today was going through that. So um, we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Now, I did pull three cards for advice, and we got the Queen of Wands, 
with the seven of um, wands and the lovers card here. Okay. So from these, um, from these, I am definitely feeling this um, idea of cr number one, creating your own reality through very brave and um, brave and what's the word I'm looking for? Profound, direct choices. Okay, choosing that which you want in your life and accepting nothing less. You know what I mean? It's we're done with telling ourselves the stories about what our life is about. And so I think that that's the advice here is to um, bravely step into this and don't accept anything less than what you're worth. And so I feel that like the idea of what you are worth may be part of the awakening process for a lot of people because they need to shed these old ideas about um not being good enough or you know not being special enough or whatever like this is happening and every person comes into this life with with a soul that is you know meant to do something um, amazing whether that's on a large or a small scale that doesn't matter like there there is um, a purpose to every soul so so this is really stepping into that and and just bravely knowing that you're protected and that you are empowered you can handle this and you can make it through whatever this is bringing at you and that you have the high ground you know you have the um the power and the authority and the um the strength to overcome what's coming in um this to me again is making that the lover's card is making that profound choice to um to accept and to choose that soul mission to accept and to choose that spiritual expansion as opposed to simply shutting down and accepting um less than and by less than i mean it's that feeling of depression and fear and anxiety and overwhelm that can come with the sort of dark night of the soul that a lot of people are in okay so this is choosing love over fear and that's literally what I've been talking about for months is choosing love over fear in every situation being the higher and that being the highest road okay so a lot of new people are being initiated into that higher path higher road higher spiritualism um, doesn't make you know people who went through it before any better than anyone else or the people that are going through it now any better than other people in their lives, but it does mean that their soul has in some way cried out for this to happen. Um, so whether or not you are currently going through that, there are a lot of changes occurring. And Okay, guys, sorry about that. Um, so I did want to get in a little bit to the dark night of the soul because a lot of people are going through that. Um, and what that is really is a time when your soul really is seeking expansion. It feels terrible. Like it feels like a mental breakdown or some kind of emotional breakdown. Um, but really it's more of a breakthrough. So how will you know if you're going through it? Well, in general, I feel like, um, there's a lot of mental pain, a lot of emotional pain, and a lot of even physical pain. A lot of physical exhaustion accompanying all those things and there's this like feeling of maybe directionlessness or not really knowing what to do next and yet you cannot escape the feeling it's not like you can distract yourself it's just very hard to escape the feeling and I find that that comes about when you're at a part in your life or a, at a time in your life when you have reached the extent that you can grow in your specific circumstances at the time and your soul is seeking to break away the things that are holding you back okay so this is like a process like you can go through i've gone through several of these in my lifetime um the last really intense dark night of the soul that i went through was last march like when that rainbow wave came in um and 
<clears throat> it opened a lot of doors for me afterwards. I shed a lot of energetic garbage that I didn't need to be holding on to anymore. But the thing about that is it also reaches into the rest of your life. So once you start to shed that energetic garbage and the sort of like mental heaviness, all of a sudden a lot of things in your life aren't resonating the same and certain things like start to fall away. So I say that not to scare you but only to let you know that the things that are lower vibrational in your life, you don't want anyway. And this is your soul's way of making sure that you're pushed forward onto a higher timeline. Um, it's like, it's kind of like a fast forward or it's like, um, a, I don't know, like a cheat in a game or something like that, like a portal you go through to get past a whole bunch of stuff quickly. Um, in this case, it can be awful. Like I remember going through this cycle for days where I would like get up in the morning, I'd meditate, I'd just like have to push myself into, you know, soothing um, music that was set to vibrations to clear my chakras. Like this is stuff that I never really, even though I was already an energy healer at this point, I never really wanted to do this on the daily. And I I would disappear into meditation for three or four hours at a time. And I was lucky that I work from home and so no one really noticed that this was going on. Um, I, I felt very hard to continue my day job. Um, it was very hard to continue to um, relate to other people in my life. Eventually I reached out to other healers and was like, this is going on for me, please help. Like because I would go through a purge and then I would have like a day or two reprieve and then the purging would start again. So it was a really um, difficult time for me. I would say that this lasted maybe a month. Um, and of course the rest of the year there are lots of different periods of purging and things like that, but nothing like March was for me. Um, so all I can say is like, on the other side, there are a lot of open doors. And I guess my top four pieces of advice would be this. So first of all, you chose this before coming into this incarnation. Um, on some level, your soul is crying out for this kind of growth. So just know it's not happening to you. It's literally happening for you, okay? Um, second of all, the best thing you can possibly do is surrender to it, okay? Don't fight it. When you fight it, you basically, number one, you're prolonging it. Or number two, you're making sure that you go through all of this for nothing and you don't end up receiving the open doors and the clearing and the leveling up at the end of it, okay? Because you're going to have to then go through it another time. Of course, it's up to you to choose whether you want to do it or not, but it's just going to, because you chose it before coming into this lifetime, it's going to keep coming up for you until you surrender to it. Release all that baggage. Um, release the old ideas, the old paradigms, um, the ways that you've seen yourself in the past, and, um, and accept the new higher vibrational template that's being offered to you. So you just need to really realize that the possibilities are quite literally um, limitless and all possibilities are equally possible at any given time, right? We just need to select them. And the way we select them is to make our vibrations resonate with that, um, that version of reality. So that means you're selecting the highest timeline when you quickly surrender into releasing the lower vibrational energies. So many people fight against this because they know very well what they're holding on to. They're holding on to feelings of um, uh, lack of self-love, judging themselves, um, you know, holding on to relationships which just make them feel worse or which are codependent or which are abusive or holding on to job. This was my big one, holding on to a job that I felt stifled in and I felt like um, I was not able to grow in and I just felt completely trapped in it. Anywhere you feel trapped, this is an indication that your soul is telling you to move on, okay? That doesn't mean you're giving up. It means you're working through the issues that are keeping you stuck so that you can move into what you need to move into, okay? Um, 
so the number three, I would say, don't judge yourself and just kind of go with the flow. Like going with the flow is the best thing you can do here. And that's one of the biggest lessons in um, the awakening process is treat yourself with love. Treat yourself um, like you would a sick child in some ways because it's almost like going through an illness to heal and be out on the other end, right? So sleep more if you need it. Drink plenty of water if you need it. Take salt water baths. I took so, I took, oh my God, I must have like supported the Epsom salt industry. I mixed Epsom salt with pink Himalayan sea salt. I did all kinds of things. I, you know, put Reiki in the water. I just, I was in the bath four or five times a day, I remember telling um, one of my healer friends. So it's really something that um, you need to listen to your body on. The one thing that you might not want to listen to, the worst, your worst enemy in all of this is your mind. And that's because that is where your ego typically expresses itself. And your ego is doggedly holding on to the past and holding on to these ideas of who you are, what you are, that you've built throughout your lifetime. So that's just human nature. That's not something to be upset with yourself about, but the process of going through the dark night of the soul and the awakening process integrates. I'm not a big one for the whole ego dissolution, get rid of your ego, kill your ego. It almost, like when you do that, for me, I feel that it will just continue to rear its head until it receives attention. So for me, it's more about integrating that with the higher self and allow it to just melt in there so that it no longer feels the need to keep acting out, okay? It gets, it receives the acceptance of itself by you, yourself, okay? I know that sounds crazy, but um, it's, it's kind of a process of saying, okay, it's okay that I'm having these thoughts. It's okay I feel this way, but there's another way. And then following the guidance of your soul, your your higher self, and your higher guides to get to that new way. Even if you aren't hearing, feeling, seeing at this time, you are being led through whether you realize it or not. You just must surrender to the things that are being shown to you, okay? And the fourth thing I would say um, is just, and I kind of already said this, but I just want to extra, make this point extra large for you. Just allow. Don't block it. Don't fight it. Don't hold on to crap that you think you need to, to, you know, survive or whatever. The universe will provide. That doesn't mean make some crazy, you know, sudden job change or leave your family or something like that. But you may need to make some decisions with yourself about how you're going to move forward and what things are not serving you and being really, it's all about honesty and being honest with yourself. Um, that sometimes comes later in the process because in the beginning you might literally be ugly crying on the floor in the fetal position, okay? That's how this works, but you will get through it. Do hang on. You're not going crazy. Um, you've not lost it. You're not sick in the head. You are just expanding in this universe that is so expansive and in this planet that's raising its entire vibration. So many people who have never been spiritual in their lives are experiencing this now okay and in the end this is a good thing all right so i hope this is helpful for some of you um i was going to do an energy healing but i think i will do that separately so this doesn't get too long and i do hope that you are doing great if you have more questions or want to set up a personal session with me for a reading or an energy healing you can do that at www.imemilygear.com and I look forward to talking to you guys again soon. Thank you. Bye.